Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, on this week's episode, what are we going to be talking about? It is the Dali Rubicor 2 loudspeaker mic. Very good. And you know Very that because it's one, you've got one right next I have, to you. I have got one right next to me, <laughs> actually. And so have you, for yes. that matter. Um, here we go. Here we go. Look at... <laughs> you, you're showing the wrong side. I oh, know you're showing the... You're showing the right side. Look at that. There we are. That's quite clever. We've got... Yes. We could, we're showing all the speaker in one hit. Yes. Um, these are amazing. Yeah, they're very, uh, very interesting speakers to me. That's a huge understatement, I think. Yeah. I think they're brilliant. You really like them. I really, really yeah. like them. Yes. Yeah, I think they're absolutely stonkingly good. Um, I was so surprised because mm. uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not... Look, you're very, very well read and very, very well versed in hi-fi, doing what you do. Uh, and occasionally brands come along on my radar, thanks to you, which I'm not so familiar with, may have yeah. heard of. Yeah. Um, ATCs sort yeah. of spring to mind. They yeah. went on my radar, and I was very impressed with these. Yeah. But I've never heard any Dali speakers before. Yeah. May have done at one or two hi-fi shows, yeah. but nothing really more than that. And then all of a sudden, pop these in, not really expecting too much. Yeah. And wow. I mean, they're just stonkingly brilliant. They are. I was so, so impressed. Mm. They do do so many things so well. Yeah, they really do. Um, and uh, yeah, I really haven't unplugged them since since I've been listening to them since we since we started. Uh, they've just been in pretty much every system. Yes, uh, which I've been which I've been testing, which which has been fairly extensive because we've had some really lovely kit recently, haven't we? Yes, um, we had the Sugden amp. Yep, uh, which they were beautiful. Have you with. given that back yet? Um, it's, <laughs> well, there's there's a, there's a bit of confession here. Um, so, uh, what happened was right. Uh, so the I, answer is no, <clears throat> and here's the explanation. Uh, well, you, you know, something like that. Yeah. So what happened was, I really wanted to listen to my quad electrostatics with the Sugden, right? And because I thought that'd be a classic combination, mm -hmm. so I plugged in my quad electrostatics, mm -hmm. and they didn't work. Right. Uh, they died again. Right. For the umpteenth time. So I went to see. Alan from Banbury, who looks the one thing, yeah, who looks after my quads, yeah, whose mortgage I paid for, right, and his holiday to Barbados okay. this right. year, uh, and he said, I, I heard he'd got a new Bentley, well. <laughs> he's got a brand new Bentley, <laughs> and he said, um, he said, uh, look, why don't we just swap them out, and he yeah. and he sold me another pair, which he's rebuilt himself. So that's why I haven't given the segment back yet because I really wanted to listen to them with the quads. So it sounds amazing. Did he give you a fifty quid trade in for your old ones? It sounds amazing. He, 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 well, <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> I, I, I doubt uh, that, but oh uh, god, yeah. Um, but anyway, sure so basically, quid. you've got um, a brand new, totally refurbished, all the way through pair of One Thing Audio Quad ESL 63s. And they're amazing. They're really, really cool. They are amazing. However, yes. it doesn't mean I have not been listening to these extensively yes. because I really, really like these. These yes. are absolutely right up my alley. Yes. Um, the only thing, which I'm absolutely, if I'm going to be honest, I'm not too keen mm -hmm. on, is what you're just about to take off now. The, yep. sort of the, the granny knickers. Granny knickers grill. Yeah, not so sure about that. Um, but I think these are absolutely fantastic. Mm. So, maybe this, I've been listening to them, going back to my conversation, yep. before I was so rudely interrupted, I've been listening to them with all sorts of the amplifiers which we've had recently. Mm -hmm. uh, so my own systems, yep. uh, some of the things which which, which, you, which you and I have, have had. Yep. You um, had the Hi-Fi Rose, didn't you? The oh RA280. These and the Hi-Fi Rose yep. were just fantastic. And yep. God, who'd have thought it, right? Who'd have thought it? We had yep. a streamer, Hi-Fi Rose and the Dalis, mm. the Salvadors. Yep. And wow, what a combination. Yeah. What an amazing combination. Yeah. So absolutely adore those. Um, and um, uh, just, they seem to sort of be very happy in my system, whichever yeah. whatever one it is. Uh, there's a couple of things I'm going to say about them though. Yeah. Uh, they have to be on stands. Mm -hmm. So otherwise it just, it's just not, not, not happening. Yeah. Uh, tried them on a shelf. Yeah. No chance. No. Because the stands need to be about 12 inches away from a wall. Right. And towed in. Okay. And they've got to be towed in. Right. Um, otherwise, it just, it's not as good. 
Okay. It's not as good. So so there's a couple of prerequisites. Yeah. But once you get that right and, right, and in fact, what's really interesting, and you may have noticed this earlier when you and I were listening to them, mm-hmm. um, I kind of moved them about an inch out yeah. from all, and, and it sort of changes the whole of the sound yep. characteristics. And I think the reason why yep. is because they've got on the back, mm-hmm. which we'll do, a flipping great big port. It's a big bass port, it is isn't a big it? bass port, yep. and that, that's quite uh, dependent yep. on how far away it is from a wall. So, yeah, and I think it needs to be sort of you know decent distance. Yeah, definitely. So, so there yeah. we are. There we are. But that's aside. Yes, they're they're not LS three five A's in the way you can shove them right. You can't shove them right up against the the boundary wall. Can no, so. no, no. And if you did, yeah. they just don't work. Yeah, they just don't work. They need to they, come out a they, little. They bit. can boom a bit if they they're really around, can. But, uh, yes, yeah. Um, and they do suit um quite clean and crisp sounding amplifiers i think um, it's really interesting yeah. i didn't think they'd work with the rose yeah um and actually they work brilliantly yeah. but then you know sort of flying in the face of what you just said they've worked really well with the sugden and i, I wouldn't say mm. that's you know necessarily all that crisp and clean being pure class a it's actually quite a warm amplifier. it is it is definitely on the warm side um, yeah but but, yeah. It, but they, they seem to be happy with that too yeah so i just like the sound characteristics yep. of them and and they they're one of those speakers where if you close your eyes they feel an awful lot bigger than they sound yeah uh sorry no they sound an awful lot bigger than they are you know yeah. what i mean i know, you know what, what you i'm mean. trying to say yeah yeah so which i just think is just spectacular yeah just spectacular they're proper big box sound from small box speakers yeah, I think I think that's exactly the 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 the, the sort of um, special trick they have, isn't it? Yes. Um, so they're basically so the Rubicor um, is uh, the Rubicor two, which is what these are, is the cheapest and smallest speaker in the new Rubicor range, uh, and it's a stand mount. Uh, that the the bigger ones are floor standards, yes. obviously. Yeah. 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 Um, but they're they're kind of like a, a I'd say a premium stand stand mounter that's still moderately affordable. So they cost um, two thousand two hundred ninety nine pounds a pair, um, and um, they've you know obviously so they're not like five grand, um, but they they sound well out of the kind of thousand pound sector, don't they? They really they, they do. Sort of, yes. Yeah. You know, it's kind of high high end for 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 you know the cash strapped almost sure, isn't budget it? high end budget high end <laughs> yeah affordable, affordable high affordable end affordable high end yeah 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 um and they are interesting so i've always really liked darley's actually um so they've always had uh and what my mum would call a nice tone okay okay <laughs> so okay. that they, they've um i think it's obviously down to the drive units one well, um, at least in part um, but they've always been kind of slightly fruity sounding, if that makes any sense. Sure. Does, um, your, does your mum watch Hi-Fi Riff? Um, no, I don't think she does. does. She not? That's a no. shame. That's a shame. She should do, because she she's, should. you know... She should. Um, she really needs to know what to buy next now when she gets rid of a Lin name 32.5, <laughs> what, you know, uh, sort of uh, 32.5, 250. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I'm just saying, mother... Watch the video. Watch the yeah, video. Absolutely. And, so. and, and hello, Mrs. Price. How are you? Nice to see you. There you see. I'm, I've always been very polite. She to always mom. likes you. Because you, your mum's very nice. We're always incredibly polite. She's very nice, yeah. your mummy. Yeah. She is. And your yeah. dad. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They wouldn't so, leave your dad out. My dad's got, car. I think he's got castle speakers very from the cool. mid-90s okay. Castle Avons. Wow. Um, wow. And he's not looking to upgrade, so he wouldn't be interested in He's not in interested this. in Hi-Fi Riff. No, no certainly okay. not in this in this episode. No, sure. So, uh, so but you, going back to what you were saying, yeah. you've always you've always liked Dali speakers. Yeah. They've always been cool. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the weird thing is, is that obviously in the UK, um, we have a very, um, uh, very particular Hi-Fi scene that is... Because we've we've done so much good hi-fi over the years, obviously it's quite um, sort of biased towards British hi-fi brands, and, yes. and that particularly applies in loudspeakers. So you know, the UK has been responsible for a lot of great loudspeakers over the years, and you know, companies like Kef etc. Have, have have built massive businesses around that Tannoy etc. Yeah, um, Celestian. Absolutely, you know, um, just lots and lots of mission and, and so on. All these names that, that have, have been around for a long time. Um, so it's quite a crowded market. 
And, and I think that that's one of the reasons that Dali's haven't done so well in the UK, because, you know, it's kind of tr trying to get in, arriving at the party late, as it were. You sure. know, everyone's introduced sure. themselves. Because he's a Danish, right? Yeah. So he's a Danish. Yeah. Danish yes. audiophile loudspeaker industries. Oh, there you go, yeah. you see. So it's not yeah. actually named after a, uh, you know, <laughs> surrealist painter. A, a famous surrealist painter. <laughs> yeah, that might look shocked. I didn't know. I didn't know. See, I learn something every day on yeah. Hi-Fi Riff. I'll tell you what, though. Um, it's You're talking about British products and British yeah. Hi-Fi, and you're drinking Madri. Mm. <laughs> so are you. Yes. Well, I was. I've only got a little drop left yeah. now. I've actually Cheers. got a beer this time. I actually have a beer this time. Yeah. Um, you always have a beer, it's just you never drink, <laughs> drink it no, on true, camera. True, um, Don't tell everybody that, because right, I normally I'll just blame you in the okay, comments. I sorry. don't know if you noticed, but I always add to your comments now, saying Mike didn't get a beer this week yes. again. Um, anyway, that aside... There have been occasionally, sorry, there have been the, the rare occasion when you haven't had a beer, but, but you know, you the way you behave, it's like you you never have a beer, especially <laughs> when you're my, at my place. I never have a beer at your place, because you never have any. And if you did, did you see this week we got slagged because you had Budweiser? Uh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, there you are. Um, so, anyway, that aside, talking about great British products, Yes. I notice you're drinking Madri. Yes, I am. Yes, yes. I bet he drinks Madri. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually that's actually really funny. But it'll need but sadly, like a good mic joke, you'll need to explain what you just yes. said. Well, um where is this brewed, Mike? No, stop, don't answer that. Okay. So let's just read this. Sorry, this is a brief beer interlude. Yes. Very important though, because it's in keeping with British language. Apologies speakers. for my for my Spanish. Cerveza excepcional. Very good. You sound so, like uh, yes. We yeah, don't say. Yeah. Um, Madri exceptional premium lager, and it says um, uh, what's it? El, Al, El Alma de, del Madrid, de Madrid, um, yeah. and uh, there's something about it being all kind of Spanishy and Madridy type yes, stuff. Yes. Yes. Uh, but we can exclusively re reveal it's it's brewed in Burton on Burton on Trent, Trent. yeah, yeah, and uh, basically by the same company that makes Carling Black Label. In, in fact, it is, and it's pretty Carling much Black Label, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty much all bar the shouting, yeah. Uh, Carling Burton Black Label. on Trent, look, DE fourteen. They go the soul the of Madrid. Yes, so the soul of Burton on Trent. <laughs> yeah, yes. So there we go. So so that's quite interesting. So. Um, but our Danish loudspeakers here, bringing it back in, mm -hmm. our Danish loudspeakers um, don't pretend to be British, do they? No. They don't pretend to be British. In fact, they're proudly Danish, aren't yes. they? Um, and quite right, too, because we like the Danes. They've, 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 they've had some nice... They invaded us uh, uh, That's right. uh, uh, around 700, well, was it, 1400 years ago, something yeah, like that. They gave us, they've given us all sorts of, of lovely so, things, the Danes, yeah. haven't they? Yep. I can't actually think of any at the moment, <laughs> but, but I'm sure. Thomas so, Bjorn. See, Thomas Bjorn, who you won't know who I'm talking about, is a know. lovely, lovely man. Yep. And um, there we so, go. Largely there we swords and, and slavery, uh, but okay. uh, that was a long time ago. We've forgiven you guys. <laughs> For all of our so, I've Danish I've been to audience. Copenhagen. It's a great city. So, I love it. I yeah. love it. It's a fantastic country. Yeah. Although your beer is way too expensive, talking about beer. Yes. And it's crazy money over there. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, our, our, our Spanish beers from Burton on Trent. So what do we know? What do we know? Um, anyway, going back. So um, I've, I've been listening to these with some vinyl. Yes. Uh, because you very kindly put a, a that Nagoka cartridge on my LP12. Yeah. So I'm back up and running. Although, yep. um, and I'm saying this live because. I could really do with a moving coil. I could really do with a moving coil. I, I love the Nagoka, but I need to get back into moving coil. So I've got some interesting songs, yes. interesting albums. Okay. So first one, uh -huh. Public Service Broadcasting. Yes. Now, I'm not sure if everyone's going to be particularly familiar with this, um, but they're a really cool band mm -hmm. and actually really quite nicely recorded. This is their latest album. I um, haven't got that yet. Bright Magic, okay. uh, which is very good, very nice indeed. Uh, did a great album uh, all about the race for space. Yes, uh, I've got that. A bit yep. of a classic, actually. Very I must good. Say. Yep. So I love that. Yep. That sounded really nice with them. Yeah. Uh, really cool. Yeah. Um, it's um, it's not the last word in recordings, yep. but it's, it's you know, very competent. Mm -hmm. Very, very competent. However, one beautifully recorded album I do have is this. And you can see this is on my mobile Fidelity Sound Lab. Yes. Original master recording. Of, Very nice. Of Ricky Lee Jones. Yeah. Ricky Lee Jones' first album entitled Ricky Lee Jones. Yeah. Um, 
do you know what I really like about this is I love the way that whoever produced it mic'd her up yeah. because it's it's really really close mic'd yeah. and it feels like she's it almost feels like she's breathing on you yeah. you know with 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 the with the salvadors here yeah. Yeah. um you know it feels like she's in the room with you yeah. and in fact what these small box loudspeakers do which i think is really quite magical yes and if you if you if you have if you've never if you have somebody who's never listened to proper hi-fi before try this put a pair of tiny box loudspeakers in the, like these in the room turn out all the lights and play something like ricky lee jones and it's like whoa you know it feels like she's right in front yeah. of you you know yeah. sort of in your face yeah um and you just it's really disorientating it's hard to know where the sound's coming from yeah. um incredible thing so so that for me is a bit of a belter mm -hmm. i love that album it's um it's an original um mobile fidelity as well, isn't it? I think it's quite yeah, it's, an old one. It is quite old, yeah. 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 Very nice. Yes, please be very careful with that. Ooh. We've got we've got previous of you right. taking records in and out of sleeves. <laughs> I can't watch. I can't look. <laughs> I can't look. But no, that's that's fab. Yeah. Um, and while you spend ages uh, putting that back in, I've got an album you won't have. What's that? And actually you're going to want it when you see it. Okay. Okay. And it's this and you I'm sure you won't you won't know this XTC this is a really gorgeous XTC album uh, called wow. Wasp Star wow. okay and it's not not their most popular release mm -hmm. um, and um, in fact it's maybe a little bit strange uh, Man Who Murdered Love um, was on this um, mm -hmm. but the song on here which I think is absolutely amazing yeah it's called Stupidly Happy okay and it sounded amazing through these it sounded really right. really cool um, and uh, Andy Partridge from XTC yep. says it's the song that Keith Richards didn't write, <laughs> and it's got the best guitar. It's riff. a very Andy Partridge kind of comment. It's actually. absolutely right, absolutely right. So, and he happened to write it instead. Exactly, so. and and it's got yeah. that. It's got it's got a brilliant guitar riff. Yeah. Um, and um, you if unless you can get that, you can't stream that. Yeah. So unless you've got a physical copy, then you'll have to watch it on YouTube. Um, but stupidly happy is really cool. Okay. And it's got a great. Can riff. I borrow it to tape? My seed, my vinyl. Yeah, of course you can. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. Yeah, um, you can give it to me back when you give me my mixtape as well. <laughs> so yeah, no, of course you may. Of course you oh, may. Thank you. Fantastic. I was um, expecting you to say no. By the way, <laughs> I'm slightly, <laughs> slightly taken aback with this viewers. <laughs> so yeah. UFO, yeah. UFO phenomenon. Look at this with yeah. Doctor Doctor on it, which is wow. just a bit of a belter. Not so off, I great just, mate. So so there's a, there's a guy who lives near me called called Justin right uh, and he was getting rid of his vinyl collection and uh, he phoned me up and mm. said or sent me a message and said is there anything I want mm. and luckily he had mm -hmm. two oh, wow. albums so, so I've been playing these again only you can rock me what a tune but again super cool yep super cool sort of fitted really nicely with the, yeah. with the Darlies yeah I think the Darlies have got a um, um, as you said earlier, very big sound for something that's not that big, um, and um, they, they also they have a kind of easy sound, so they don't sound like it's the music is being squeezed through a toothpaste tube. That's so true. Um, uh, so you could quite easily put these on stands in a medium, even a large room if you've got a, a powerful amp, uh, and and they would really fill the room very well. Yes. Um, as you said, they do have to come out a little bit because the bass ports can be a little bit lively when they're very close uh, to to the back wall um, but um, they have a they have a to me they have a very sort of human musical um, enjoyable sound it's not an anal analytical uh, kind of listen is it no um, it's it's no. you know we've been talking about the ATCs uh, in another riff the SEM 40s which are Admittedly, a much cheaper speaker, but also even for the SCM sevens. SCM sevens, thank you. Um, but even the SCM forties, um, which are the big uh, floor standards, um, they're slightly cerebral in some ways, aren't they? They are, yeah. Uh, and yeah. the the Darleys are very much from a kind of different uh, approach to. Uh, I think yeah. these are genre agnostic. Okay. And I just don't think it what really. What does that mean? Then? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, I think that um, yeah. I think it doesn't matter what you throw at them; they play it yeah. really nicely. Yeah. And 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 just yeah. just final vinyl. Yeah. Um, Martin Stevenson and the Dainty, uh, Dainties, right? The second album, yes. Add Some Humour and Blue, yep. which I adore. Yep. Which I think is a brilliant album. There's a song on here called uh, called Nancy, 
which is just absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, and uh, very different to, yeah. you know, Only You Can Rock that. Me by UFO. Yes. Uh, but wow, just sounded amazing. And yeah. so, so it just doesn't seem to matter what you throw at the Daleks. Yeah. They just play it really nicely. Yes. And I'm so impressed with them. I yeah. really am. So, so impressed with them. I think, you know, these are in the, the top 10 best speakers I've ever heard. Yeah. I just think they're absolutely terrific. I really, really do. Um, and uh, and look, we should uh, we should do... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking, I've got a... I, I, the first um, album he did. Yes, Boat to Bolivia. Yep. I've got a signed copy. No. I saw him in Bristol in 1985, brought my record with me, hung around Amazing. behind, and Amazing. Um, even got a photograph of myself with a great man. I've got a YouTube challenge. I've okay. just thought of it. All a right. YouTube challenge, right? So, so uh, Martin Stevenson, yeah. I don't know if you're aware of this, did a duet with, with Carl from Micro Disney. I okay. didn't know that, and and it's called. Let, it was a cover of "Let's Call the Whole Thing Off." Yep, and it's the most weird video right. ever, and I can't find it anywhere. And I saw it once on television about two o'clock in the morning on some weird program, um, and either I dreamt it, yep. but there is a video out there of "Let's Call the Whole Thing Off" of, of Micro Disney's front man hmm. and the Dainty's front man, and I really, really want to see that. Well, so there yeah. we are. If anyone has a link to that, pop it in the thing, and I'll be chuffed to bits. Um, we should do a we should do a riff, riff on yes, on this. Absolutely. Do a riff on this. So um, I'll just finish up by saying I really like Dali drive units and the mid bass unit here, the mid bass driver. Um, I think it's called um, Clarity uh, is the, the the name that they give to this one. It's a it's a pulp, uh, a paper and wood fibre Clarity cone, and Dali have all, always had interesting. Uh, cones, you know, they've you have interesting material, and and I, I think that's what gives these speakers a quite unique sound. They've they've got a distinctive sound. They do, and it's a really nice sound. Um, it's not coloured as such, but it has certainly a, a very pleasing tone, um, and um, you know matches up very nicely with the uh, with with the soft dome tweeter here as well. Um, so an interesting speaker, I'd say. Uh, they are a bit hard to drive for ohm nominal impedance, so you've got to have a an amp that really goes like down low. Uh, That's why the rose like, drive like the so hi-fi well. rose yeah. absolutely perfect for that. Yes, sucked in not quite so perfect, but Probably still, not. you know, at medium volumes it's fine. Yeah, um, and um, the rose had so much headroom. Yeah, massive, crazy. Yeah, that was yeah. a very good synergistic combination. It I was think glorious. The, 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 these speakers and the hi-fi rose suited one another in basically in in the the Rose's ability, this is the RA280, uh, I think yes, we're talking about, yeah. um, suited it very well in um, in terms of ease of drive. It could drive these really easily. And also tonally, slightly light and crisp sound of the Rose really matched the sort of slightly yeah. warm sound of the Dali's. Um, so a surprisingly nice combination. Sure. Um, so I'm going to give these eight and a half. Um, Competition is really, really, really tough at this price point, around two thousand, you know, roughly two thousand um, pounds. But there's certainly people who who will hear them and think that's the best thing around for me. I I don't want anything else. It really hits a spot. It does something. Uh, it does a number of things very well. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, it's something that you should be on your radar despite being not kind of flavour of the month brand in, in the sort of British speaker world. Do you know, you're absolutely yeah. right. And we've, 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 we've reviewed quite a few speakers around this price point, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. Um, you know, from the, the neat Magister Isobarics yeah. to, you know, LS35As to, yeah. you know, all sorts of weird, absolutely. wonderful neat, things. Neat Ministers and, uh, you know, LS35As, absolutely. Yes. Basic Falcon, LS35As, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. And um, we've loved, I've loved so many yeah. of the speakers we've listened to. Yeah. But honestly, right out of the box for yeah. me, these I just just thought they had something really special, yeah. um, and they should definitely be on your short list if this is your your market, yeah. without a doubt. Okay. So, so a nine from me yeah. every day of the week. Yeah. Every All day right. of the week. So there we go. That's fair there enough. we go. Yeah. Cool. All right. So um, just have a recap. So we've we've covered uh, beer. Yes. Um, we've covered how to uh, how to record a record properly. Um, we've talked about we've 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 done a request for videos, which are yes. rare and hard to find. Did we actually talk about the speakers at all? I don't know if we did. <laughs> well, we've, we've got a bit of, you know, any other business in here. Uh, Welcome but, to uh, Hi-Fi Riff. Absolutely. <laughs> and on that note. Yes. On that bombshell, 
thank you, thank you <laughs> again for watching this episode. And we'll look forward very much to seeing you at the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.